Neil deGrasse Tyson was being a really good sport. Uh, and he answered some whack pack questions. And he talked with Bigfoot, our bearded friend from Vermont. Bigfoot had a good question. He wanted to know about death. Hi, this is Bigfoot. Hey, Mr. Scientist Man. What happens to we, we, after we die? Bigfoot, good question. So for me, I spend my life dining upon the flora and fauna of the world. So when I die, I want to be buried so that my body can be consumed by flora and fauna, just as I had consumed them, thereby returning the energy content of my body back into the ecosystem. Now, if you want instead to be cremated, something different happens to the energy content of your body. When you're cremated, these large molecules of your body break apart and release energy, heating the air in the chimney of the smokestack of the crematorium. That air gets heated and radiates infrared light into space forever at the speed of light. So in that way, all the energy that you once were is handed out to the greater universe rather than kept here on earth. And by the way, knowing I'm going to die is what gives urgency and meaning to everything I do. Great answer. He told you the scientific answer to what happens to the energy that's contained in your body. Now, we were curious, what the hell did Bigfoot retain after the answer was over? We asked him, <laughs> here's, here's what Bigfoot said. Explain to me, what did the scientist say happens when you die? I don't give a shit what happens to my body. I'm dead, I'm dead. Science can go to hell as far as I care. He said something about space is and stuff like that, and I don't understand what he's trying to get to. Your body dies. He explains it when they burn you in a fire, all the energy goes up into space. And ever and ever and ever, yes. You got that part. And Tan Mom asked Neil deGrasse Tyson a question. I I don't think, I think Neil deGrasse Tyson left uh, left the country after he got uh, these questions. <laughs> but he was very sweet about it. Tan Mom asked Neil the question as old as life itself. Hi, Mr. Scientist. This is Tan Mom. My question for you is what is the meaning of life? Tan Mom, thanks for asking. So often people say, I'm looking for meaning, implying that meaning is something out there waiting to be found by you. Is it under a rock, behind a tree, in a monastery? You go looking for it. And I'm not satisfied with that as a solution to the question. I think we have the power to create meaning in our life. Meaning, for me, is I, I want to know a little more tomorrow about the world than I know today. That brings meaning to my life. And I also, with whatever even occasionally trifling investment of my time and energy and resources, lessen the suffering of others so that the world is better off for you having lived in it. I beseech you to treasure up in your hearts these, my parting words. Be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. There is the source of meaning. I got to hand it to him. That's a good answer. Because what, again, it's based in fact. There is no meaning well, for life the, unless the you give is, it one. There is no meaning, right? That's there right. No That's it. That's what he's saying. So we checked in with Tamam, see what she got out of that, okay. what he said. So, Patricia, explain to me, what did he just say? He was saying the power of life is not under a rock or a tree, and the power of life to him, to him, would be what you can find in yourself instead of looking all over the place um, for answers. It, it, the power is within you. Well, that's profound. So, in your own words, what did the scientist really say is the meaning of life? I'm sorry, I'm so distracted with, I'm in a salon right now. She can't think because she's in a salon. <laughs> hey, I get that.